If you want to get better at photography, you need to be getting feedback on your work. But are you getting the right kind of feedback for your level of expertise or are you doing more harm than good? In this video, I'm going to walk you through the science of feedback to help you get the right feedback for your stage of photography. Let's go. Let's picture growth as a photographer on a spectrum. At the one end, you've got a beginner, right? You just picked up a camera for the first time and you're trying to learn what the cute little dial icons mean. Honestly, I'm not a beginner anymore and sometimes I still don't know what some of them mean. At the other end, you've got an expert, someone who has absolutely mastered their craft, understands everything to do with photography and their custom settings might give a beginner a mild stroke. Between that are loads of different points that are unique to you. How you progress from being a beginner to an expert will really change based on your style of photography. There'll be certain things that you want to learn that other people don't want to learn. I, for example, have no interest in learning long exposure. And all these different points will be completely unique. So for the purposes of this video, I want to focus on how you feel about where you are in your journey, whether you feel like you're a beginner, whether you feel like you're an intermediate, or whether you feel like you're an expert. But where you are on that spectrum dictates the type of feedback that you need. Throughout this section, I'm going to be talking about this study here. Let's start right at the beginning. Research shows that beginners really need to focus on motivation and things that will make them pick up the camera. I mean, it's obvious, right? This is supposed to be a fun hobby. This is something we want to do in our free time, when it's raining, when it's cold, no matter the weather, we want to get out with the camera and take pictures. So the idea of, of feedback at the beginning is to make it fun, make it engaging, and focus on the positive side of things. Now, it might feel intuitive for a beginner to go out and get negative feedback because they need to know exactly where to improve the most, right? But this can deter you from wanting to go out and take photos at all. This doesn't mean that people need to tell you that every photo is magnificent, and if you're early photos or anything like mine, chances are they're not at all. <coughs> but this is more about focusing on the areas that you do well. There's a great example of this in Billy, Billy Connolly's book, his autobiography, Windswept and Interesting, where he talks about how he got into art, which has which recently turned into a multi-million pound revenue stream for him. But when he first started getting into art, he went through this feedback process. Now, I will warn you, I can't do a Scottish accent, so I have asked an AI to do this for me, so please forgive me if it is terrible. In the past, I had never been able to draw, but I started drawing blobby-type things I called islands. I divided them up into different backgrounds and colours and became utterly engrossed for about a week. When the tour was over, I said to Pamela, I've been drawing these things, they're pretty crap, but do you think they're getting better? She said, they're definitely getting better, so I carried on. Who you get this feedback from is really up to you at this stage. Ideally, you want it to be someone that's experienced at photography and better than you, but it doesn't matter if it's just a friend. But the kind of phrases that you want to be hearing from these people are things like, you do this really well. Uh, I love the way that you captured. You're really good at. These are all positive phrases that are going to egg you on to keep doing this. Now, this might sound a little bit like, you know, every participant gets a prize. And it's not about that. It's not about pandering to you as a photographer. It's about getting the feedback that you need at that time. And beginners can be really, really discouraged by negative feedback that says that you're not good. Because let's face it, the first time we pick up a camera, we all know we're not very good. We need to get better at things. So focusing on the areas that you do well, whether it's a certain leading line that you've been able to grab, whether it's the way you've caught a sunset, if it's the colors, whatever it is, getting that positive reinforcement is really, really, really important at this stage. As you move further down the spectrum towards intermediate and you feel more confident in your skills and you've noticed your skills grow, you can start adding, adding negative feedback into the feedback that you're getting. Now, that doesn't mean go out and find someone to absolutely rip your photos to shreds. However, getting negative feedback on areas of improvement can be really beneficial to helping you grow as a photographer at this stage. This is where things like photography groups, online communities, and even things like photo workshops can be really, really good for you. I recently went on a trip to Iceland and I learned so much about photography, just being there and watching how other photographers take photos, learning how they approach different scenes and speaking to the guide who was a professional photographer himself. I also found it really useful with this YouTube channel. So I wanna give you a bit of a personal example. When I first set up this channel, I've got a friend who is a literally a professional YouTuber. He does this for a living. And I asked him to look at my first video and tell me what he liked about it and what he didn't like about it and what I could do better. Now, this isn't my first time creating video content. I've done that professionally in other capacities in my day-to-day -day life in the past. So even though it was my first video, this is still like intermediate level feedback. And here's the email of what he had to say. You can see that he really points out things like, you did this really well, but this could have been better. You were really good at that, but you might want to try improving this. And that was really, really valuable for me. 
In fact, in the course of one video, I was able to go from a video that looked like this, with a really poor setup and really poor lighting, and was just me talking to camera, to this, that is a much different setup in the space of one video. That looks much more like a professional YouTube video and it's actually the scene that you're seeing me in now, right? So just getting that feedback was really good in helping me get to the next stage. And you can do this in your photography as well by reaching out to people that are objectively better than you. I know art is subjective and for someone to be better or worse than you is, you know, really up in the air and up for interpretation. But finding someone that does things that you want to do well and getting their feedback will be good. At the expert level, the need for negative feedback gets greater. And that's what the research shows, that people who are at this level need to get more negative feedback in order to improve. And it makes sense, right? You know that you're a good photographer, you know you're able to do things, but you might have a knowledge gap or you might be missing sort of the final 10 to 15% that's gonna help you get your images to where you want them to be. That doesn't mean that people can't praise your work, but when you're looking to learn, seeking negative feedback about what you can do better and what you can improve on is going to be massively valuable. I think a really, really good example of this comes from Nigel Danson's YouTube channel. He's a landscape photographer that I love. Go and follow his work if you're interested in that style of, in that style of photography. But in his video, he asked for some world-class photographers to break down his photos and give feedback on them. And I'm gonna put a clip of this so that you can see a little bit what he's talking about, but I will link to the video below as well. Is from Iceland, from Vestrahorn, and um, it's a really interesting one this, because I like this image, but there's something that I'm not 100% sure about, but I spent so long composing this image, so it'll be interesting if people pick up on that. Now, this was the only one that I did uh, actually struggle with uh, compositionally, and uh, I've seen lots of images from this general area. Uh, I think it's called the, the Vesterhorn. I've never actually been here myself in, in Iceland. Um, but positioning the mountain on the left-hand side of the image here with such a bright sky, to me it feels very unbalanced. So this image is definitely one that I was a little bit conflicted with myself, um, definitely with the balance of it, everyone sort of pointed that out really. The, the unbalanced nature of this and how your eye goes through it is exactly the problem with the image really. And uh, it's, it's a really nice image, but I, I, again, I, I agree with what everyone's saying. That's the sign of a true expert someone that has taken feedback really well, knows that it's hard, it's hard to get feedback, let's face it, when people start talking about your art and criticizing your art, it can make you feel a bit shit. But he takes it on the chin and he sees the areas for improving, it gives him an excitement to try and get out and do more. Do go and watch that video if you can, you could learn a lot about your own photography through that as well. But this is what feedback looks like at the expert level. 